Hey, welcome back. This is the second video in this little series of making a super simple farming game. We are making a farming game where you're a little floating robot because we don't have to uh, animate that really. And you can plant seeds and crops grow and that kind of thing. It's sort of like Stardew Valley-ish, but very, very, very simple in Pico 8. So far we have, we can kind of wander around and we can plant seeds like this, but nothing happens to them. Okay, so our goals are have a player that can move. Oh, baby, we're doing that. We already did that. We can plant seeds. Now it's time to get the crops to grow. By the way, if you're just getting started with game development or maybe just getting started with Pico 8, I have a course called Pico 8 Noob to Pro. We go over my step-by-step -step process to go from game dev noob to being able to create any kind of game in Pico 8. This thing is just packed full of aha moments, and I know it'll help you make your game ideas a reality. It's called Pico 8 Noob to Pro. There's a link in the description or go to spacecatdev.com. Now it's time to get the crops to grow. Now there's a few different ways that we can do this, and we could do it a really simple way, which uh, would basically mean that after a while, if we have a tile with seeds on it, that it eventually just turns to a tile with a carrot on it, and they all turn to a tile with carrots on it at the same time. You know, we could do something where every 10 seconds or so it goes through and it finds all of the tiles that have seeds on them and then turns them into carrot tiles. And that would be that would be fine. Let's let's do that real quick and just see how that works. So, let's just make a new tab and we'll just call this uh growing. We'll just call it nature. Nature's way. <laughs> okay. This is nature's way. Let's say uh, I function I crops and function U crops function D crops. And this is just breaking this out into three different functions that we don't have to write out exclusively in our init update and draw. I'm going to draw our crops under our player, but really we can update them before or after we can init before or after. It doesn't really matter. Save that. And so now this will actually do things. And so let's start a timer. So like how about crop timer? This is just going to start at, um, I don't know. Let's say if we want this to be every 10 seconds, that'd be like 300 frames. And so we're going to start here at 300 and then every frame, we're going to say crop timer minus equals one. And then for now, we'll just print crop timer like this, save run. And so now we have this timer going down up here. And when this hits zero, the idea is that we'll grow our crops. Okay. So we'll just say, um, if crop timer is less than or equal, or if crop timer is greater than zero, then do this else we're going to say, uh, grow crops and we'll make a custom function there. And then we'll reset crop timer. So crop timer equals 300 and okay. So all we're doing is setting this crop timer to 300 and then having it go down every frame. And then once it hits zero, we're going to call a function grow crops. So it's basically just going to loop. Okay. So every 10 seconds, we're going to call this grow crops. So what the heck does grow crops do? Well, what we're going to do is loop through all of the tiles in the map, and we're going to search for this three tile and anything that's three, we're going to turn into four pretty much. So that will effectively grow some carrots. So let's do a four loop. So four and let's say X equals zero comma. How wide is our map here? Our map is 15 tiles wide. So one to 15, do this, and we'll do this also on the Y axis. So Y equals zero comma 15, do 
and we'll have an end and an end. And what this will do is loop through numbers 0 through 15. And for every 0 to 15 on for this variable x, it's also going to loop through 15, 0 through 15 on y. And so effectively, what we're going to get is a bunch of values, you know, of x and y. And this itself isn't directly related to our tiles, but it's going to work perfectly for searching and looping through the entire map of tiles, at least this first screen of tiles. So if we did something like uh, M set, like if we wanted to just plow the whole land, which would be uh, tile two, we could just say X comma Y comma two like this, save run. And when this timer goes all the way down, it's going to turn everything into tiled land because that's really what we're telling it to do. Boom. Everything is tilled. Okay. So we are looping through all of our tiles here on our screen, which is good. That means we're doing it right. But we're going to only do this uh, if m get x comma y equals three. So basically, if the land has seeds on it, so if seeds, then we're going to grow a carrot. Okay, so save run. Oh, we should actually do a then. Save run. Okay, so now I can plant these seeds like this. And anywhere where I plant seeds, there's going to be a carrot here. Boop, grows carrots. Cool. So now I can plant more seeds. And as that loop goes back, those eventually turn into carrots, which is really neat. So that's like almost what we want. But, you know, I could put one down like right now and it immediately becomes a carrot. And then I put one here and it takes like 10 seconds to turn into a carrot. Depends on how much we care about that. So like all of these and this one all, oh, I almost, I just about missed it. I missed it. But now, everything turns into carrots at a certain time. If we don't really care about that, we can just stop here. And anytime we put down seeds, after a while they turn into carrots. Sometimes it takes a long time and we just stare at it for a long time. And sometimes we can put it down and it pretty much immediately becomes a carrot. That's the really simple way of doing this. But I think a better way, even though we are trying to keep this simple, I think a better way would be to add all of these tiles to an array and have them individually turn into carrots over time. Okay. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to make an array of our tiles. Let's do something like seeds. Maybe let's just say seeds. So seeds equals an array or a table. It's the same thing. And Anytime that we plant a seed, we're going to add a table to this table of seeds. So we're going to basically tell it that there are seeds to grow here. So plant seeds, and we'll just do this. We'll say, if button X, then we can, we can probably set this, but we also need to add to our table of seeds, a table, and we'll say uh, x equals ptx, and let's say sx for seed x, just because it's a little bit less confusing, and then sy equals pty, like that, and then we'll say something like um, time in ground, or tig, <laughs> tig equals zero, so this is time in ground. And so the reason we're doing it this way is because we can individually keep track of every single seed that we plant. Okay. So um, right now, when we plant a seed, we're adding a addition to our table of seeds that has a couple properties. 
One is the x position, the other one's the y position, and the third one is the time in ground, and the time in ground is zero, okay? So now, what we should do is every frame, instead of doing our crop timer here, let's just loop through for all in, or let's say for um, S in all seeds, do uh, s.tig, which is the time in ground for the individual seed, plus equals one, okay? And then if s.tig is greater than however long we want, so maybe 300, just like before, then, then we do our, our grow crops. But let's just say M set, and we can actually get this X and Y without going through a for loop like this because we're already looping through all of the seeds and we already have the X and Y position. So S dot SX and S dot SY equals four. So I think let's do that. Save and run. So now if we hit this like this, it should be about 10 seconds before that turns into a carrot. And these should kind of go in order. It should just go boop, boop. Yep, and then this one, boop. Yeah, so now it's based on how long ago I planted these seeds. And so they should go in order that I planted them. So there it goes. It's kind of following that order. What a really cool thing. And it wasn't that hard to actually make that happen. And now we have a much better kind of growing system than we did that isn't just based on timing. It's based on when we put the seed in the ground. Oh, that's so neat. Look at that. He's just growing carrots. Oh man. And of course we could add a whole bunch to this game, but man, this is uh, this is a really great start. What do you think we should add next? What, what's the next step here? And let's, let's go ahead and do it together. Let me know in the comments below. And again, if you are a noob to Pico 8 and some of this doesn't quite make sense, I have a really cool course teaching you the basics of game dev with Pico 8. And that's called Pico 8 Noob to Pro. It's available now at spacecatdev.com. Make sure to check that out. There's a link in the description. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me and growing some carrots. Hope you have an awesome day.